Hello and welcome to day, what are, day three of the Boyfriend Cardigan Sew Along. So um, I'm going to chill here for a minute and wait for some people to join in. Um, I know we started at a different time today because my nephew came over and hung out with me today. So, okay. so I'm hoping this is a good time for people. We will see. Huh? So, <clears throat> oh my goodness, I took a drink of coffee right before I started and <clears throat> now it's like stuck in my throat. So, um, I'm going to be starting soon. Um, I've been working with this beautiful brushed sweater knit from Sly Fox. So, um, really, really excited to have this done because it's so soft. It's so nice. So, um, so yeah. Let's see who all joins in. So hopefully people were able to get lunch and if they have little kids, get them down for a nap and get to hang out with us today. So we'll see how today goes. Yesterday I made a couple mistakes. So, which is totally fine. Um, everything is going to be wearable at the end. So, um, Today I failed at making hot tea, so <laughs> fingers crossed that I don't make any fun mistakes today. So um, while we wait for people to join, I'm going to share with you, um, this believe it or not is, well, it started off as a boyfriend cardigan. This is one, it's cotton lycra, it's kind of like a mock-up trial run to see if I would like it. So I chopped it off considerably shorter and then changed the pockets to just a straight square rectangle patch and added a band at the bottom and then a more narrow band around the front of it. Um, oh, and cuffs. So, and I didn't shorten the sleeves, so it's, they're really long after adding the cuffs, which is fine. That's what I wanted. Um, I get it pretty decent amount of use out of this. I need to make one in a better color. I did make my band a little short so it pulls up in the front, but uh, this is one of the hacks that I'm going to be sharing on Friday. So I'll show you guys where I shortened this on the pattern piece and everything to make this possible and all that. So um, but yeah, I like it. It's a fun, different look entirely for the boyfriend cardigan proof that you can do it without a sweater net. And then underneath it, I have, you know, that Luna Lace, um, cami tutorial that I did a little while back. That's what's on underneath it. See? Hey, Anna! So, um, and Pat. Hi, guys! So, yeah, um, you guys ready to get started on this? So, um, oh my goodness, so when I said about, like, the surged edges, why I leave, let me get some. So, I've been using this one for my blog pictures because the sew alongs on the blog too. Remember how I said I'm not finishing the seams and that's why, like, this is surged and it itches me. So, I feel like that one of those kids that complains that their clothes bother them, that's me. Um, but here is the inside of this beautiful knit and you can see how the hem just falls open naturally and it blends in nicely and I think it blends in nicer than what the surged edge would and it's super soft so um, I'm excited to finish this I went ahead and sewed the side seams of this one already so that's oh thank you it's comfy, so um, I'm all about comfortable clothes. So, but yeah, so this is, I like it with the raw edge, and I have no fear that that's going to come undone. I just did a short straight stitch, and it's going to be fine. So um, that's coming along nicely. Here's the one that I'm working on for the, for the video. And you can see this sweater knit, it behaves more like, you know, like a knit knit. 
and knit knit. I'm just making words up now. So it doesn't curl and follows open as nicely as this one does, but it's still it's way softer than what the serged edge is going to be. So, um, like I said, you're welcome to serge your edges or leave them raw, whatever works for you. So for you, not anybody else. So um, I have this puzzle piece to work with. So we're going to do the side seams today and tackle that hem vent that we have on it. Okay. Ah, I caught my pocket on my drawer pull. Alrighty, so let me move this over, try to move that over. We're going to lay out the puzzle piece. So you want to make sure, because this is how my day is going, you want to make sure that you don't try to line up the sleeve <laughs> with the side seam because I did that earlier. I didn't sew it. I caught it earlier, early enough, but I was a little perplexed on why I wasn't finding the hem vent. Okay, this has to go. This is in the way. It'll come back. Don't worry. Okay, so let's lay this out. Put the back in the center. Let's see. Hey, Jen. All right, can you guys see that? Okay, sort of. Okay, back in the center. And then remember we marked the star on the hem vent. I marked it with the safety pin. I have to remember to remove those. So now just bring the front down and line it up. Line up the bottom of the arm side for the front and back. And I am going to clip those together. And um, open up, if you're not surging, open up your seams. Um, when you're pinning them together, it will prevent them from being bulky. It just helps it lay nice. And so just go ahead and line up those seams. So I, I line up, I start at the arm side and then I do the sleeve hem. And pin it there. I'm going to throw in one extra clip in the sleeve. I said I'm not really big on clipping but because this is so soft and drapey I am clipping a little bit more than normal because it's twisting up like a puzzle okay so then I'm going to line up the hem vents are lined up and clip there and then just line up the side seam. Okay. And like I said, make sure you're doing this right sides together. We always sew right sides together. Make sure. I'm not missing any comments or anything happening. So, okay. Alright, so. While I have it laid out, I'm going to go ahead and pin both sides because then it's not going to get twisted. Normally I just do one side at a time, but today we'll use our time wisely and then I don't have to untwist this again. So again, opening up the arm side seam and putting a clip there and then sleeve him. And then something else we're going to go over today when we hem because I don't want to use just, I've been using a straight stitch for assembling everything else. I don't want to use a straight stitch to hem the sleeves. It would be fine on the bottom, but I do this all the time and a straight stitch there at the sleeve hem is going to break and pop and make me sad. So, um... I am going to show you guys how to use a double needle today to um, use that to hem. I'll, well, machines are they're pr very similar, so um, I would say look up your machines. Some of them they're particular about um, which direction the thread comes off the spool for the second needle. My machine's not, so, um, but I will show you guys how to do that today, and we'll be hemming the sleeve with 
the double needle. You can hem the bottom with just a straight stitch because it it's not it doesn't need any stretch to it or anything. Okay. Alrighty, we're ready to sew. Oh yay! See, Jen, I'm gonna I'm gonna have you sewing all the clothes, all professional looking in no time. Okay. So I start at the sleeve hem. Get my threads pushed back and away we're gonna go. Okay, so just a reminder, don't start your really light weight knits right on the edge. Start forward a little bit. My pedal's moved. So that the fabric doesn't get pushed down into the throat plate. That's not fun. Okay. Alright, and away we go. Lengthen that just a little because otherwise it's gonna pull. Oh, I didn't. I do want that back. Ugh. Pause. your sewing machine. I don't have mine turned on over here because I only have one extension cord. Um, but I have this really cool little miniature bar light that's it's right under here in this part of my, of my machine and it's really nice like when the guy at the shop was like trying to up upsell me on it I really wasn't convinced at first, but then he's like, oh, we're just going to throw it in, throw it in with the machine, and, you know, I don't argue with little free add-ons, and I actually use it a lot. Like, my machine before this, I didn't even have the light bulb <laughs> inside. It burnt out, and I just kept going. <laughs> so, when I got this machine a few years ago, it was like, sewing with all the light. Alrighty, sorry, it shifted a little bit. There we go. And just working to make sure that the arm size seam stayed nice and flat. safety pins I'm taking them out now so um but he should be gone before the 10 a.m. mark so um we'll be back to a regularly scheduled program time tomorrow so um there we go okay so when you get to that star marking you definitely want to back stitch because that's a big stress point on your fabric. So um, I backstitch there a few stitches and make sure it's nice and secure. So there we go. One side down. Let me see. Stop right there. You don't sew all the way down that vent, so you're just gonna stop at that star mark. Or yeah, it's a star. I couldn't remember if it was a different shape, but it's a star. Okay, now we're gonna do the other side. Okay. My nails keep sticking to this fabric. No. I was 
was doing my um, Presto photo shoot the other day with my oldest daughter. And I totally, I don't know how I did it. I wasn't doing anything weird, but totally broke a nail off really short. And it's, you know, they, they, they like get really low and it hurts. And you can't like cut it cleanly because you're like cutting off the tip of your finger if you do that. Well, I did that and now it's snagging on absolutely everything because I can't, I can't clean it up. Yeah. Small problems, but still annoying. Okay. It's curling a little bit on me. It's still nice and bright in here. We're supposed to be getting rain, and so I was really nervous that it would be dark in here. It can be kind of kind of dreary down here sometimes. If it's a rainy day, but so far it's good. Which means that Thomas got to play outside for recess, so. He will have some of that energy burnt off of him. to work any harder than it has to. There we go. Okay, I have to take out the safety pins on this side now. Any questions about anything happening so far? How did how did yesterday go for everybody? Did you guys any issues come up that you have questions about or anything? Everybody's good. Oh. No surprises jumped out at you. Okay. All right. We have two side scenes. All right. So that's what we have on both sides. So again, stop before the edge. Sorry. Yeah, I failed at making hot tea. I don't know if you caught that earlier. <laughs> so I needed to go get, needed to have somebody bring, make me something today because hot tea was baffling <laughs> this morning. So, okay. So now we're going to take our cardigan and lay it open with the wrong side up. And then you want to press that whole side seam open. So um, that is going to make assemble, assembling the hem, split hem, top stitching it a lot easier. So um, let me get this arranged a little bit. Reactivate my iron. Okay. So can you guys see how? Okay. Hey, Jennifer. It is dinner time for you. What's for dinner? We're having eggs and ham and pancakes if I'm nice. So, okay. So that's pressed open. And then just right along that seam allowance, press those vents open. So um, it's right along there. And then because I don't want to rearrange this again once I get over to my ironing board. I'm just going to throw a couple pins in here just for transportation purposes and press this. Is this going to even hold a seam? We'll see if this holds a seam. This might be a mute point if it doesn't hold a seam. Da, 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 da. Let's bring you wet. How's that sound? There we go. It's my little ironing station. I gave up my ironing board a while ago because I didn't have enough space. So I 
I have, you can buy interfacing, that, you know, that Insta Bright interfacing. I remove my pen so I don't melt the pen heads. And I just put a few layers of that on top of my table. Okay, sorry, I'm testing. Make sure I don't melt anything. a little bit of a crease. So anyway, I just put the insole braid on and I do have an old cutting mat under it, but it's not obviously my good one. There we go. So did that for that side. I'm going to do this one side at a time. Oh, chicken schnitzel. I don't even know what that is. Like, Spicy wedges. I'm assuming those are potatoes. Like, I do potato wedges, which is really yummy. Now I want potato wedges. We had corned beef and cabbage and potatoes last night. It was good. Okay, so now we're going to do the first part of our hem on this. Arr, I just had lunch, but now I'm already hungry for dinner, which is not good. All right, so what we just pressed, open that up. So we should have a nice crease there. And now you're going to take your hem. If you want to finish the raw edge of the bottom, do that now. Like, do it before you do this part. I'm not finishing mine. So, um, okay, then it's easier to work from the front. Flip this over. And you're going to fold the hem up one inch to the front side of the your cardigan. So um, I know that's that's backwards for how we normally hem. It's not going to stay like this. So let me get my hem gauge. And let me get pretty close. So you're going to fold it up one inch, and then that crease that we just pressed, we're going to straight stitch. <clears throat> excuse me, right along that crease. I'm going to sew this, and then I'll show you. Is that what share? Alrighty, can you see that right there? So we fold the hem, <coughs> excuse me, oh my goodness. Fold the hem up one inch to the right side. So at your right side of the fabric, fold the hem up one inch and then straight stitch right where we did that crease. And then we're gonna do that to the other side. Other side of that hem vent, fold up again one inch. And then you're going to stitch there also. See, just like that. And then we're going to do that to the other side. But before we do that, so this is what you have. So then you're going to take it and turn it to the wrong side. Turn that hem the right direction, fold the hem to the wrong side of the fabric, and look, that encases that raw edge, and it gives you this really, like, you can't even see that seam, a really beautiful finish. So, um, so that doesn't get stretched out, I'm going to throw a clip right there, and then we're going to do this same thing to the other hem vent. So we're going to go over to my machine or to the iron. There we go. I know, isn't that cool? And there's a video tutorial on this too. Um, because there's a couple of the patterns that have this technique. Um, actually, the Presto tunic has the same, remember the shirt I wore on Monday? It has that same side vent and yeah. Um, what else? Uh, Tara tunic has the split vent also. And I was thinking that there's one more, but I could be wrong. I 
can't recall anymore, but I thought there was another one. Okay. I'm going to press that nicely. Because otherwise you have to mark that line. If your sweater knit does not press, you just need to measure. So like if, if it doesn't press, you just need to measure how wide that is. So like it's about an inch and a quarter on mine and mark that line. Notifications on my phone. Okay. So now again, we've pressed that, open that up and then turn it over to the right side, fold it up an inch. I have a squeaky chair. It sounds like a little baby bird sometimes. Okay. And then again, repeating what we just did, straight stitch down. And do that for both sides. I don't, yeah, don't measure too much. Ah, see, I caught it, and it, and it went. Okay, there we go. All right, and then again, we're just gonna take these, do it close up, and then I like to fold that in. And then it's hard to do it one handed though. Flip it in. And then do it to the other side. So I just fold it over and then that ensures that all that lays nicely. See right there, it's all folded nice. Use your thumb to poke out the corner. And there we go. And so now we're going to sew our hem. So just continue folding up the hem one inch along the whole bottom and we're going to stitch it in place. So I am also going to throw some clips into my where I press the side vent. I usually stand when I work. I, I don't even sit usually when I sew at the machine. Like I stand a lot. I can't sit. It's just not working for me. Okay, so when I clip this, I work where we just sew that to make sure that all that fabric gets tucked in so that it, it is a nice finished hidden nothing's poking out the top or anything. Do you want it to be nice looking? Alright, and then I'm gonna move this. Let's see, let me get that turned so that you guys can see better. There we go. And then just lay out your piece and fold up your hem. And use your hem gauge as needed and pin it all because we're going to sew this entire hem in one go. So um, you can press this up if your sweater knit will take a good press. I'm, I'm anxious to melt this so I'm using my iron as little as possible. So I'm just clipping my hem up. So anxious about melting it. What's my proper English there? There we go. See, lots of pins. And then I think this is the last one. No, I didn't turn this one right side out. And up it goes. Yeah, and 
all that is nicely hidden. It gives such a nice finished edge. I I love that trick with the, the hem vents. Okay, so there we go. Everything is pinned in place. And now we're going to just use a straight stitch and go all the way around. Any questions about that so far? So like I said, if you want that raw edge finished, you'll do that now. Another thing that you could do is before you were to do that straight stitch, you can press this under the raw edge under a quarter of an inch if you wanted to. Um, that would work well for a really lightweight sweater knit, but something bulky, it's not going to work as well. So start at the front of your sweater and just hem with a straight stitch. Ooh. And this is a vanilla flat white. I'm debating on whether that camera needs to move. It's a vanilla flat white. Highly recommend it. It's very good. Alright, so lengthening my stitch. Okay, for this knit, I'm like top stitching at a 3.9, and for reference, my machine goes to a stitch length of 5. So, if you were curious on my machine settings at all. Okay. go to the edge just past the edge of the vent so um I use my fingers a lot to feel where my fabric edges are underneath the fabric so um you could certainly measure it and mark and all that but when you get to the edge of the vent just go a little bit over it and then drop your needle and pivot make sure your vent is lying, lying, laying, laying nice and flat. Nothing's tucked under. And so up the vent. And like I said, I'm just using my finger to feel where the edge of the fabric is. Um, I know that doesn't work for everybody. You could also use chalk or a fabric pencil or something, or even a hand stitch, a basting stitch to um, show where that stitch line needs to be. Okay, so get just past the top of the vent, and I'm about a quarter of an inch, and then drop the needle and pivot again, and now you're gonna stitch all the way across the vent. Make sure that all of your fabrics are nice and flat underneath. Nothing is tucked up or bunching. And then when you get to the edge of the vent, just pivot and go back down the other side. Press your foot. Take your time and go slow. Just I keep using my hand to feel if um, my fabric is folding up underneath it. That, what's that say? Sorry, I, I need new glasses. The vents is really easy. I know it it sounds and can look complicated, but it really is a really easy technique. Um, it's a really cute finishing detail. Tammy was brilliant in the way that she did the construction of it. And I tell you to take your time and then I'm like powering through it. Take your time though. 
Do you ever feel like when you're sewing it and you're like, you're hunched up over it? I just, ooh, I feel like that. I have been behind the scenes. I am currently also working on two more of these so that I can show you the different front finishing techniques tomorrow. So I've got two more I'm working on and then I want to try sizing down and see how that fits me. Um, my daughter wears hers that's like three sizes too small all the time. So I'm curious on how it fits in the shoulder since it's designed to be a drop shoulder. So um, I know a lot of that is going to depend on the type of fabric I use and everything, but I'm essentially going to sew one in her size and see if I can get away with wearing it. And then if I can't, oh, I need to go a little bit more. If I can't, then hey, bonus for Kate, she gets a new cardigan. If I can, though, it's mine. Which is fine because they like to steal my clothes anyways. I mean, you guys have seen all the outfits of mine that Jillian's stolen. Which I kind of have mixed feelings for. That either means that I dress really cool and my 16 year old wants to dress like me. Or it means that I dress like a 16 year old. So, I don't feel like I dress like a 16 year old. But, you know, I've been delusional about other stuff before. So, who knows. Alrighty, we are almost to the end. Just one more pivot to make. And I promise this goes a lot faster when you're not talking and stopping to show stuff and everything. Um, if I'm not doing it like conversation wise and everything, I can, I can sew one of these in about an, an hour. So. If you're looking at how long this is taking me and thinking, holy cow, don't fear it. You totally have time. Okay, just making sure I'm not missing any comments. Okay, there we go. This, I'm going to show you, but the th thread blends really well. So, um, there's my vent side one and then whew, the clouds are moving in I might need to turn the light on in here Ooh, I got really close to my hem there's the inside so you see why I choose not to surge like it's hidden is that in focus like you can barely see that it got really 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 close at times I might go over and make a second pass um through so like I stitched right there so I might take a second pass just inside so that it is double stitched line just to ensure that nothing falls apart in a wash but as I'm pulling on it I caught everything so that's it that is how easy it is to hem this that's super easy there's where to go there's our hem bent. Can you see that? Isn't that beautiful? And it's all clean finish on the inside. Well, not clean finish, but it looks nice. Okay, so now we're going to do our sleeves. And we're going to hem them. So before I do that, thank you. I'm trying to think if I can move my camera over. Okay. I'm trying to get you the best view possible for doing the double needle. Alright, so this is, can you see it? I can't see my phone that close. So somebody let me know if that is in focus or not. Because to me it's blurry. Can you guys read what type of needle I use? And did that flip that around so it's mirror image? It's a um, stretch twin needle for slash 75. So the four references how far apart the two needles are, those come in different sizes. I think the other one is a two maybe, and the needles are closer together. So this is what I use. Ow, I poked myself. The blue is knit, red is universal. So, um, is that clear? 
Okay, so this goes in your machine just like, you know, a regular needle. So the, it, it just pops up in there. No difference right there. And I'm just finger tightening that right now. I'm not getting out the screwdriver. Okay, let's, let's see. Let's try this. You guys are going to come with me here. Let's go on an adventure. Get the cord. Okay. So, I flip ya. Now you get the ugly side view. So all the gross stuff behind my machine. Alrighty, so here's my machine. I already have the second spool up here. So when you thread, we're going to see if I can thread one-handed. Ah. So when you thread your double needle, you just thread it the same way that you thread the single needle. Or at least on my machine and other machines that I've used. Sorry, guys. Okay, so go through there. Go around there. You just follow the same... Okay, I will. Just a second, Sarah. Um, follow the same pattern. Up, down. So then you have two threads coming through your machine. Follow it through here. Okay, this is where some machines vary. So you see this little hook right there? Most machines that I have dealt with, you only catch the left needle in, or the yeah the thread for the left needle is the one that goes in there um, if your threads are twisting up it's probably because you're putting both of your needles behind or both of your threads behind this catch and let me where's my needle casing real quick so I don't forget there we go is that is that in focus there that looks in focus I think so shh, don't tell anybody yes I am using serger thread in my machine it's not ideal, you guys. You get more lint. I know um, I clean my machine out a lot more than I would when I use regular thread. But yes, you should not. Serger thread is linty. No, I have never had a seam break because I use serger thread. So, but yes, I'm busted. So, um, one thread, your left thread through that hook, and then just thread... Sorry. Thread your needle the way you would any other time. So the one that went behind that hook, holy cow, I can't see what I'm doing. It goes in the left. I might have to set you guys down for this. I've got a little thread on there. See, yesterday's episode was how many times can Kelly mess up? Today's episode is Kelly wears glasses and she still can't see. So, okay. I'm going to set you guys down, but I'm going to, I'll tell you what I'm doing. So, left thread goes in there, right thread goes in there. That's it. That is all it takes to set up a double needle. Now, you see they're twisted right there. That's fine that those are twisted up right there because when they come down here, they're forced to separate. And then the hook, having only one thread behind it, keeps them from twisting together. So, um, any questions about that? That's, that's all there is to a double needle. You still want to use a straight stitch. Um, I have this fun button that changes the tension slightly for a double needle. Sometimes you just need to you make it just a touch tighter so not a lot if I didn't have that button I would probably adjust this to just past the four so where it's almost to the four I would just go just past the four um, that's it it's not a scary process to do a double needle so all right I'm gonna flip you around fix my glasses again okay da -da 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 -da. hi and get the phone back up on here and not kill the video. There we go. Oh, I almost did. That was almost bad. Okay, there we go. So any questions on the double needle while I get it threaded? So um, normally, 
See? Right there. I got one. I just couldn't get it at the right angle. Like, where I have to see. Couldn't get it at the right angle. Because I have to see it at the side. I can't see it straight on. <laughs> like a deer. You know that, that deer are blind straight on? We live in the Midwest. And so there's deer. Like, there's deer in my backyard a lot of times. Yes! Day three! Yay! Glad you're here, Tara. You can still join us. There's plenty of time. Okay, so, um, so also lengthen your stitch length also when you're using the double needle. I'm not going to change it because I just had it lengthened for the top stitching anyway. Let me grab some woven fabric and then you can see what this should look like. when you stitch so and then whenever you re-thread you should stitch a little sample anyway it's like it's just general rule of thumb okay it is getting dark in here let me turn the lights on ta-da look there's light okay so see nice straight parallel lines and then the back, you will have this zigzag. And that gives your stitch a little bit of stretch to it. So that's why we're going to use the double needle, or why I'm using the double needle, to hem. Um, if you don't have a double needle, or if it still scares you a little bit, which is fine, or you have a machine that doesn't like them, I, I had a machine that didn't, no matter what I did, I even messed with the bob intention because I read that helps. Nothing worked to get that thing to use a double needle. So um, you can hem this with a short, a long, narrow zigzag stitch. Or if you have a cover stitch machine, obviously that would be your option. So fold the hems up one inch. Um, if you want this Raw edge finished. Finish it, obviously, before doing this. Um, press if your fabric allows. And then you'll notice that I don't have that free arm on my machine. Um, this is, it's a professional level machine. Most of them don't, really. Um, you don't need a free arm. And honestly, even if I did have a free arm, I wouldn't use it because it stretches the heck out of your sleeves. So, um, hem with your sleeve inside out, and then you just slide the sleeve into your machine and go around that way. So, um, does anybody need a close-up of that? Um, I know that we're all different levels here, so that's fine. If you need a close-up, let me know, and I'll bring the camera down again and show you. So, um... Just stitch all the way around your hem. There's your clips. Um, careful not to stretch it or anything. And then back stitch, lock your stitches, whichever you do. And then can you see that? It's a blurry. It's kind of hidden. They're really tiny. And then this is the back side. Ooh, I got really close. Let's see. See how it, all those stitches, all that raw edge. Ooh, it, it's caught. It's secure. But man, did I get close. Alrighty. Sleeve two. Boom. Okay. And then another thing I'm doing, I'm opening up this side seam also so that it's not bulky there. Because I like, I don't like a lot of bulk in my clothes. Because the seams bother me. Okay. So. And this is it. This is it for today. Today is really short day I feel like so we'll get these hemmed up
<laughs> my clip fell into the way. is fine see there you can see but it's still yes tomorrow's gonna be the band and so I'll go over the shawl collar the hood how to attach that and just folding over and hemming so I'm gonna do all three so tomorrow we'll be here a little bit longer so um but we're limited I have a it can't go past an hour and a half because otherwise we're going to have to do part A and part B because Kate has a dentist appointment. She got her braces off and Chicky got a cavity. So she was not brushing her molars very well with those braces on. So we're going to go get that filled tomorrow. But here we go. We have hemmed sleeves and hemmed bottom. So it's looking like a cardigan. Doop, doop, doop. So there we go. So that's it for today. See how nice this looks? And it does have a little bit of tunneling and I know a lot of people are like die hard against that. I, I don't, it doesn't bother me. I don't, it doesn't matter to me if I have a little bit of tunneling. So I find it usually goes away in the wash anyway. So whenever, um, it's tension issues, um, stitch length, all sorts of fabric. Like, this is probably due to the fabric. You could put some interfacing, or remember that stitch witchery that I talked about the other day? You could put that in your hem if your um, fabric's really slick. So that would make hemming easier. <coughs> Excuse me, you can do that along the bottom too if you wanted. So, but yeah. Any questions? Anything that was confusing. I tend to go fast, talk fast, so if I missed something that you want clarified, just let me know. So, um, I've still been enjoying the pictures that you're posting in the progress links and everything. So, um, yeah, I'll see you again tomorrow, Jennifer. It's been fun. So, all right. Well, if there's nothing else, then we'll call this one a day. So, um, get hemmed and show those pictures. If you're just now joining in, that's fine. Just keep adding your pictures to day one. So we'll have over the weekend to catch up and then Monday, Sunday, no Monday, I'll put my post cause I want to give you guys time to sew on, um, Sunday, Monday will be the final post for prizes and stuff. So I know I haven't really talked about those much. So, um, yeah, we'll have a pri little prize package for you guys. So, um, yeah, after I close up this video and get it saved, then I'll upload the album for today and you can share your cardigans there. So awesome. You guys have a wonderful Wednesday. Bye.